Real Agriculture Soybean School is brought to you by Basic Seeds and Lollamond Plant Care. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin, back in Oxford County today, catching up with Ken Curra, agronomist from BASF here on the Soybean School, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Things yeah. are growing, sun and, is shining. And we're getting hotter and hotter as yes. the sun gets higher and higher. Yeah. Hey, and what else is happening here is, you know, this crop is moving along. I mean, yes. we're just past the summer solstice, and we're going to start rapidly moving here, and we've got to think about, you know, Fungicides, white mold specifically. Yeah, we've been focused on stand establishment to date and getting herbicide down and getting that weed control finished up. And now we're standing in, you know, I can I can see the fifth trifoliate on starting to unfold on these beans here. So they're basically V4 and then some. The time is coming. Yeah. So yeah, need to start thinking about management to push that crop through the summer months. So what are we looking at? R2, R2.5, take us through that. Yeah, so uh, soybean fungicide, I really am, uh, I'm focused on the white mold play first. That's an R2 to R2.5 timing. So what does that actually look like on the plant? Regardless of the number of nodes or vegetative stage, it's looking for the presence of a flower on the top two nodes of the soybean plant, that's your indicator. I find the growers and applicators tend to get caught off guard on this one. Like we like to get to that Canada Day weekend, hopefully we're nearly done with herbicides by then, take a breather, and all of a sudden R2, R2.5 lands around Jan, you know, July 4th to July 10th in a lot of cases. We tend to get caught napping on that one a little bit, so it's important to look at the fields and be ready. Ken, what about a one-pass versus a two-pass strategy here? Obviously, you know, uh, we'd like to do it one, but sometimes there's going to be situations where there are two-pass strategies. Yeah, so one-pass versus two-pass. Function of geography, so shorter growing seasons, looking at one-pass, right? In that case, I'm really looking for a true white mold product, but a, mi uh, you know, a mix of multiple modes of effective action type product, multiple fungicide family. And I want something with a strobe in it because it's that group 11 strobilion fungicide that really builds seed weight and brings some yield to the table, provided it's just a, it's a true white mold product as well. Good efficacy on white mold. Two pass, different story burn for the two pass. We're really looking at putting in that true white mold product first at R2, R2.5. And uh, growers that have been dedicated to that two pass program in high, high white mold risk areas, second pass is with a strobe product, a group 11 product to extend that white mold protection. And again, those strobilurons, they build seed weight and that's where that extra little yield push is mm -hmm. coming from. Also got to think about mitigating factors, field history, a lot yes. of other things uh, that we need to consider. Yeah, field history is an easy one to put, uh, you know, to pick up. Like we're standing on some pretty nice ground right here. You know, you look at shelter belts, such as what's behind us, those areas are prone to white mold, history of manure, high fertility. Uh, we're in seven and a half inch soybeans here. So a little bit less air circulation, right? That's a, that's a risk factor as well versus 15s or 20 inch or wider. One unknown factor this year that we don't always think about, few pockets of the countryside had a tough time getting corn in, but the nitrogen was already down, whether it was manure or commercial fertilizer. Um, that fertility underneath those beans, if you had to switch to beans, gonna push them, could make them rank. And uh, even another factor, late season rains. Yeah. You know, make that, you know, I'm looking at, you know, this plant right here, fairly short internodes. We get a late season rain with some heat. We can push out really long internode spaces there. Tells you a bit of the history of the soybean plants, life through the summer, but we tend to get a little loopy and rank on top. So another factor for growers mm -hmm. to consider. Final thing, Ken, a couple of application questions. Uh, you know, we always have to be mindful of what we're putting in the tank when it comes to fungicide. Exactly, so I think first rule there, let's not put three things in the tank. So a combination of a herbicide, a fungicide, or herbicide insecticide with a foliar fertilizer. Um, three things in the tank, it's a lot for a soybean plant to metabolize. You know, there's a lot of things going on there, especially when plants are under stress. Back up to two things in the tank, fungicide plus a foliar fertilizer, especially a potassium containing product. We've seen nice synergies there in the past. We always caution growers when it comes to mixing a fungicide with a foliar fertilizer, especially something that's new to them, is to, uh, to do a jar test. We would rather you know, diagnose that potential, uh, you know, whether it's a mixing order thing or whether it's just a compatibility thing. You know, we'd like to know that in a jar in our workshop versus in the sprayer and have a problem there at the nozzles or at the filters. So that's another thing and I think the third thing is combining weed control with fungicide it's not a desirable situation especially a product like glyphosate where we want lower water volumes versus the 20 gallons that we're going to recommend with fungicide all the time uh, I know what happens out there 
but at the end of the day, we should really be looking at our weed control plan and how can we get this taken care of earlier uh, in the absence of resprays. What can we do differently as far as our weed control plan next year? Well, Ken, uh, great stuff. Uh, always uh, appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with us on Soybean School. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity, Bern, and have a great day. You can find more episodes of the Soybean School by going to soybeanschool.com or finding the Real Agriculture YouTube channel.